I'm chatting to the Minister of Finance and Economic Development of Mauritius, and you're watching CNBC Africa here at DSTV 410. Minister, thanks very much for your time. Let's just start by getting your overview of the current political environment as it stands in Mauritius for those who aren't afraid with the changes that have taken place of late. Right, thank you. Thank you for the question. In fact, we are a new government which came out of elections uh, in December 2014. So we are quite, we are not new in the business of government. I've been in government for quite some time. But uh, this is a new government which is facing a very special situation in the sense that uh, we have become now, we have emerged as uh, an upper middle income country. And we are stuck in what we call the middle income trap in the sense that the rate of growth is just stagnating at around 3.5%. With this rate, we'll never come out of the trap. So we had to review the whole strategy of the country. This was uh, the challenge we had. Um, taking for granted, knowing that, that the, the, the old sectors, uh, the traditional sectors, are not delivering enough, so we had to reinvent the whole economy. And we came out with this beautiful approach, which is based on the fact that Mauritius is Africa. We are totally part of Africa. We are a member of uh, all the associations, organizations you can think of, SADEC, COMESA, and you call it. So we are part of Africa, number one. N number two, as long as the continent is sleeping, we are sleeping also. So the magic which is happening now is that Africa is emerging in such a powerful way that it is dra dragging with it Mauritius also. How? in uh, uh, three simple ways. Uh, number one, it's clear that if we want uh, uh, the type of growth we are looking for in Africa and in Mauritius, we need uh, to communicate. We need to have uh, air facilities. We need to have uh, communication by sea facilities, which we don't really have now. So it's all about connectivity. It's all about connectivity. So this is where Mauritius is and has to play a major role. If you look at the map of this part of the world, we are positioned geographically to become the most important regional port. This is something like a destiny. In fact, Mauritius is known also as the star and key of the Indian Ocean. I get the feeling that we are getting very close to it. So we have uh, developed in this new strategy, sort of pyramidal structure, three ports of development. One is the ocean. Ocean for one very simple reason. Uh, Mauritius is a stone in the, isle, in the ocean, less than 2,000 square kilometers. But then we have, people won't know this, but we have 2.4 million square kilometers of economic zone. That's huge. A surface which is larger than what India has presently. Just to give you an idea of what it is. That's so we impressive are context. A, we are a continent in some way, an ocean continent. So uh, the strategy is based on using in a better way resources of the ocean while naturally respecting the environment, the ecology of the whole ocean. So we have finalized uh, the, the process now for uh, what I call a maritime hub, which means that the port of Mauritius will have to increase by 10 times at least for the next eight years, which means massive investment in port development, massive investment in free port development. You can't have a port if there is no merchandise for Africa. So a free port, the port development. This uh, maritime uh, hub will, I think, connect Mauritius to African countries, but also connect other countries that are exporting or that wish to export to Africa to use the African base as, uh, as a connection. So, so Minister, yes. the, the overarching aim there with the Maritime Hub is to become one of the most important ports in Africa or the most important port? The. The most uh, important port in Africa. I don't want to say it in a, in a way to, to, to challenge or to or be, it, it's just a gift of God. <laughs> No one decided to wear Mauritius really. It is there, and geographically, it will become the star and key of the Indian Ocean in terms of connectivity, in terms of ocean connectivity. So I think that we took the right decision. Ocean Have you put timing to this agenda? Yes, 
how yes. long how long is it going to take in you? fact we gave ourselves eight years and then i need to say also that when you build up huge projects it looks like a dream and at times people say this chap is dreaming which is not the case in fact the project for the for the maritime zone is moving very fast the beautiful story which i want to to be given the chance of sharing with you today and that is what we propose to share with Africa. This is the third part of this your agenda, the Africa agenda. This is the Africa agenda. And I never thought that things would move so fast. You know, each of our, con each of our country has got uh, assets, has got experience which it can share with others. And every time I travel abroad, I always say, I've come to learn and to share. Nothing more than this. So this approach to Africa, to African countries, is based on sharing, cooperation, South-South cooperation in the respect of each other. This is, for me, fundamentally very important. Before we go any further, I think let's hit the issue of the DTA, Double Taxation Agreement, right on its head. And that is that some African countries have traditionally felt that maybe Mauritius benefits uh, at, uh, in, in terms of, from a taxation perspective, they are not receiving the full part of the pie. Let's put it that way. Right. Do you want to take a, a Feeling from of that? unfairness. Yeah, exactly. Feeling that Mauritius is getting the best of the deal. And this is, I think, a perception. But very often perception is truth. But in reality, I must tell you one thing, that the, what we call the offshore sector in Mauritius is not really offshore. It is a global business center which is at the service of other countries. So the global uh, center is not, is not what you would call a paradis fiscal, as we say in French. It's a place where you, you open uh, shell companies, you do round tripping, and you try to get the best out of a DTA to abuse of the other. We said it very clearly when we took over that the financial sector is and will become a most transparent, accountable financial sector. Our Prime Minister is now in India and who met with uh, Prime Minister Modi two days back, discussed on this issue and the Prime Minister said, we will do the extra mile to make a, a, of Mauritius a clean, transparent destination for financial business. So it's win-win for everybody. This is, it has to be a win-win. If not, the DTA has no interest. I need to say that with South Africa, for instance, we have an incredible uh, level of business that is developing. And I want to ensure that at no time, the Minister of Finance in South Africa feels that the DTA is working against the interest of South Africa. You can rest assured, we will never do anything like this. We want to ensure on the other side that this huge financial sector in Mauritius be used by all African countries. Two issues at that level. Number one, number one, we are approaching this cooperation at the level of each government. It's government to government that agrees. I take one example, Ghana. Ghana, uh, we went there. They came to Mauritius, we shared friendship. The friendship then, then naturally led to the question, how can we work together? So we have signed an MOU. The Ghanaian government is going to parliament next week to approve this G2G agreement. And what it means is that under this G2G agreement, we are setting up a special purpose vehicle that will become the financial corridor for world invest investment, a regional investment that goes through Mauritius to Ghana. This is huge, and I really want this to work well. In fact, Mauritius Ghana experience can further down the road become an experience that other countries can, can follow, in the sense that it is government to government. It involves the setting up of a special purpose vehicle by both countries. It involves also, uh, also on our side that we use our connection to ensure that Mauritius becomes a transit place for funds to travel to Africa. In the case of Ghana, for instance, we have taken the commitment of building there a cyber city. Next month, uh, in, on the 15th of November, 
I am uh, in fact uh, um, leading a 100-man delegation to Ghana. This is the largest delegation which ever left uh, the Mauritius. 100 CEOs that say we believe in Africa, we believe in Ghana. And they are coming to see ways and means of investment, of cooperation in various fields. We are in, uh, in Ghana with with uh, sugar producers, we have a huge experience in sugar. In the sugar cane, obviously, sugar being cane. the, the lifeblood of so the Mauritian economy. For quite long, and now it's behind us. But then we are using the, this know-how to transfer it to Ghana. So we are developing their production of sugar, production of livestock. We are also uh, working on, 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 a on a cooperation that can be worked in the long term. And the good news, I'll tell you one thing, is that this project with Ghana today, tomorrow with Senegal, further down the road with Ivory Coast, then with Zambia, then with Uganda, then with, with Madagascar. So it's going to become an example an of a relationship that can be transferred can between be different transferred. African countries. You mentioned earlier in the conversation that the Mauritian economy is stuck at this 3.5% GDP growth rate and that you have to unlock the Africa potential mm -hmm. to elevate uh, GDP. This is obviously what you are doing. I know that you are passionate about the free movement of goods, people and capital as being a starting point. Intra-Africa trade we have to unlock as an African continent to insulate us from the global environment to some extent mm -hmm. because there is so much benefit that we can reap from partnerships. Can you give me some sense of how other governments are responding to the, the thought of free movement of goods, capital and people? It is seeping in. I use the word seeping, I would have used another word, but unfortunately things don't move that quickly. I must acknowledge that, that unless we have a proper uh, air connectivity uh, within Africa and then Mauritius with Africa, just en parenthèse I need to tell you that we are presently finalizing discussions with the Southeast Asian company, air company, to ensure that Mauritius becomes a base from where we can also have connectivity with many African countries, using probably Zambia in the future as a hub for Africa. So this is, those are projects which are moving on, but then the concept is, do we want integration? Yes, we want it. If not, we would never have been member of the SADC, of COMESA. I think that in Africa there is a very strong political commitment to further integration. This I am convinced of it and I'm also confident that now we have to work on it. Work towards it means air connectivity, it means sea connectivity. Uh, Mauritius cannot connect with Ghana and with other countries if we don't have sea connectivity. So that comes back to the maritime hub. It comes to the maritime hub. And becoming hub. the most important port it in Africa. It comes to the maritime hub. It comes also to connectivity with African countries. I'm just, uh, uh, we decided last week, we move quite fast at times, so we are setting up next week a regional shipping company where we are going to invest 15 million US dollars, Mauritius. Then we'll have new partners in the Indian Ocean Islands just to ensure that there is freight facility that can connect our countries. So this is freight, this is air connectivity. There is also naturally e-connectivity. This is where also we are investing quite massively to ensure that we have the proper uh, fiber connection, connectivity with our Just talking about the composition of the economic landscape in Mauritius, obviously services the largest component mm -hmm. uh, with manufacturing and industrialization mm -hmm. uh, lagging. You are, I, I assume, along with other African governments, focusing on boosting manufacturing capabilities within Mauritius. Is that a key strategy? It has to be. If there is no substance, there is no development. I take the case of the or what we call the offshore center in Mauritius. I'm insisting thereon that there is business done. And I fully agree with other countries when they say that DTA should be accompanied by real value added. In fact, you must have followed events in Lima, which happened recently. The G20 countries are meeting very soon with a process, with a procedure, with a project to ensure that there is not abuse of DTAs by certain countries. And I love it. In fact, 
This will lead to what? This will lead to a situation where substance must be added. You know what has happened to us? And India put the question to us when we went there recently. They said, look here, we don't mind a DTA. We don't mind if, if in the process, Mauritius and India is in a win-win situation. The problem with the DTA is that some, uh, some, some intelligent, I would say it, uh, businessmen are using those, this taxation system to avoid taxation in both countries. Therefore, they are not paying any tax either to Mauritius or to India. We don't want this to continue. We want, in fact, uh, in, in the DTA agreement to ensure that both countries win. Win through what? Win by adding substance to what they are doing. And the country that adds substance can then claim tax revenue. Tourism. Mark Twain famously said that Mauritius was created first, then heaven, and that heaven was copied after Mauritius. I think that sums up the tourism opportunity that Mauritius has had and continues to, to have. Is it something that still is a, a key focus for your government? Here again we are blessed. We are blessed with an island uh, which uh, is, which has developed in the course of time into a ver very powerful democracy. Uh, and, uh, and transparency, the name of the game now in Mauritius, I am working on it non-stop to ensure good governance, to ensure transparency. So we are on the path where we want business to be done easily. And we are working with, uh, with wor the World Bank on the program whereby Mauritius in the next five years will be among the 15 countries on planet Earth where it is easiest to do business. Ease of doing business is related to corruption. The more you have corruption in a country, the less you have ease of doing business. So we are working on both issues. Number one, transparency, and, and number two, to ensure therefore that, that, uh, that uh, we become a destination where people, investors especially, know that they are protected, whether it be legally, whether it be uh, the judiciary in Mauritius is very independent. The press, oh my God, once you get into government, you are fired at. But that is, this, that's so I should be it. being a lot tougher on you then, that's the considering what you're used to in your, in your home country. Uh, just coming back to the tourism focus, as you say, Mauritius is blessed. Can you grow tourism further? Are there strategies that you can put together to make it even more attractive when you compare yourself to other top tourist destinations globally? Well, competition is the name of the game. We have to live with it. But what we have done recently can be, become something interesting and new. We went to Singapore, met with Changi Airport, and came into an agreement with Changi Airport that Changi will do the marketing of Mauritius. And we are therefore, as from the 12th of March, having four flights on Singapore non-stop. Therefore, Changi would ensure that Southeast Asian airlines use Changi to promote tourism to Mauritius. And our responsibility there is to ensure that we connect with Africa. Now, one of the projects we are working on is to work on using Mauritius as also a destination to hop to other uh, uh, countries, example, South Africa. So, um, we are working now on, on what we call trilateral tourism, whereby the tourist comes, comes to Mauritius, goes to the region, and then return back. This, I think, will help also in, a, in, in the further integration of the region. When I speak of the region, it's Mauritius, our beautiful islands around Seychelles, uh, Madagascar, uh, and then naturally Africa. Africa is ultimately um, the big brother the one we, where we want to, to be part of in the, in the global economy. Minister, you mentioned corruption earlier, and obviously on global stages, one of the terms associated with, with Africa is still corruption. Just remind me of your government's stance on corruption. How do you deal with it? Are you heavy-handed? At two levels. Number one, we have at times to be, to be heavy handed to show that we mean business. But, uh, but this is not the process. I'll give you an example. 
if the town and country planner of a district council is taking bribe, you put him in prison. <laughs> the next one who will come will do the same thing. Why? Not because he is corrupt, but because the system as it is encourages corruption. Therefore, we are working much more on this to remove from the system areas, means whereby corruption is encouraged. How? And this is where probably e-governance is taking center stage in Mauritius. I give you one example. In three to four years, any investor can go online, apply for a building permit, apply for an EIA license and get it through with a minimum of human intervention. I think that this is a, a lesson that we've learned. We are now practicing it and I am sure it will work. And when it works, then we would love to share it also with our neighbors in Africa. What this means is that corruption is also doesn't necessitate heavy legislation. You know, the temptation is high in a country where you change government and the new government comes and say, we'll put order, the rough and tough way. So you bring in tough legislation, it doesn't work if the system doesn't change. The Malagasy people have a beautiful proverb that says that control is like mud. The more you want to squeeze it, the more it squeezes out. So the solution is not to have heavy laws. The solution is to modify the system that gives lieu, that encourages corruption. And this is on what we are working, using, using the internet, using e-governance, using technology, using digital to ensure that in five years, Mauritius is a clean, please, clean place for doing business. Let me talk now about your personal legacy. What do you want your personal legacy as Minister of Finance and Economic Development to be for Mauritius? That's a good question. Why? Because I'm not 20. Um, we have reached, I've been in politics for very long. I've reached the point now when uh, the, the need to hand over, the need to leave a legacy is very strong. And in fact, what we are doing now, the Prime Minister of Mauritius is 85. So we are a transition. And what is in a transition is that there is no ego, there is no search for personal gain. It's just that we want to be there, we serve and we go. And the huge project we are doing now is for me a way of saying thank you to my country. Because I know that the three prongs, those three poles of development will ensure massive growth so just reminding our audience again, we, we're talking about ocean. This is in terms of the three-pronged strategy. It's ocean, the maritime hub, and then the Africa and agenda. Africa. Three in one. Take one, one last example. We, we went to Seychelles uh, last week. Oh, we, I love Seychelles. But on top of this, it's a country which is developing very fast. Uh, at the level of the ocean, we've signed a bilateral agreement for the mutual exploitation, exploration and exploitation of 390,000 square kilometers of ocean. I am happy that we are doing with Seychelles, Seychelles, Mauritius, because the lesson I'm learning is that sharing is the name of, of the game, not taking, sharing. And that's, I, I would love to leave as a legacy for, for my people, for the children to come, that we are here to grow and to share. And the same message goes also when it comes to dealing with Africa. On the growth element, 3.5% we've spoken about as being 2013-2014 growth rate there and thereabouts. You've indicated that the strategy now is about leveraging that growth. Can you put a number to it? Are you targeting a specific number? I know this is difficult, but as a business finance, a finance journalist, it's, it's all about you the numbers. You need figures. We, we're looking oh, for you figures. Need some figures. Okay. So, some target going okay. forward. I'll give it as an indication. For me, uh, the trend is my friend, and the objective is what is most important. So the objective is that in 2017 and 18, we reached 5.7 percent of growth. How to achieve it? through the development of those new areas of investment. Mauritius is not an island that is isolated from the planet. We form part of it. So what is happening elsewhere will affect us. I am quite anxious when it comes to the world economy. I I'm glad you bring us there because it's, it's very important to get your view it's on It's very important that we talk about it and that we face the music. 
If not, the day of reckoning will come. The message is simple. We are being asked to put order in our house and we are not doing it. Whether it is the USA, Europe, you call it Japan, they are not doing it. In fact, it's kicking the can down the road in terms of finding the right solution. And this is not the solution. This is, it, I, I, I must tell you one thing. I'm convinced now that we are heading towards a new crisis. I hope not as serious as 2008, but the message is clear. Since 2008, seven years later, we haven't kick-started the whole world economy. Nothing has taken up. We flooded the whole world with currency. With easy printed money. printed easy money, and the easy money is not going in production. It is going in speculation on the stock market and commodities. This cannot be the name of the game. Minister, I think that's a, a perfect place to leave our conversation. Thank you very much Thank you. for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you to yours. I've been chatting to the Minister of Finance and Economic Development of Mauritius. You're watching CNBC Africa here on DSTV 410.